Fancy Night from Entertainment Tonight, my fellow people that we get locked in hotel rooms at Movie Junkets together for many hours. It's good to see you guys. Thank you for coming out to the Booksmart little Q&A. Uh, I'm so excited to host, so I'm going to ask the cast to take their seats. Just like in first grade, there's a uh, name for everyone, so come on in. And then they're going to introduce themselves, so come on in. Can you find your seat? I'm going to sit here on the Kelty seat. She's right here, guys. The director's right. It's her debut. Um, Booksmart is, is such a coming-of-age, fun, fresh take on female friendships. Um, this cast is incredible, and I wanted everyone to go around and introduce yourselves one at a time, which I know is a little bit awkward, but then maybe your role, and then also, you know, kind of how you got to this spot, because I think the backstory of all of you actors is really incredible, and how Olivia felt, uh, found each of you. So, do you want to... You want to start? Fire it up. All right. Okay. <laughs> you want to start off? Okay. Austin. So, okay, so what story am I telling you? So, your name, <laughs> who you play. So, I am Austin Crute. Woo! I play Alan on Booksmart. Alan on Booksmart. Um, okay, so here is how I became Alan on Booksmart. I went to NYU and I was on spring break. Hey, so I took my spring break right. to LA because I was like, you know what? I'm sending so many tapes to people. Let me get in some rooms for real. <laughs> yeah. So I went to spring break and Ooh. then I walked into Allison Jones' office and she was like, and I read for Jared originally. Ooh. Then she was just like, oh. then she was like, yo, you know what? You seem like too cool for Jared. <laughs> He's not here. It's okay. He's not here. Yeah. Just read this. Let me just see what that is. So then I read, so then I came back on Sunday because I was going to leave that following Monday. She was like, wait, okay, don't go anywhere. You have to meet the director. And I was like, okay. So then I came back. It was like kind of like a closed session. I was like, oh, nobody else in here. Okay. And then she pops into the door. Who pops in? Olivia Wilde. <laughs> Goddess in the flesh. I'm like, oh my god. So then we go upstairs. I read Alan, and then next thing you know, bip de bop de boo. I'm on set. You're on set. Okay, so you're amazing. We only have 25 minutes, so we're going to pair these stories in a little tighter, but you know what? You win the Oscar tonight. Share microphone. Hi, uh, I'm Diana Silvers. I play Hope. Um, and I guess how I got the came across the role. I was um, shooting something in Mississippi. I was sent the script, and originally they wanted me to read for Ryan, which I was like, I don't think that's, don't think that's me. And then when I got back um, from filming, I got the script again. They were like, okay, you can read for any one of the of the females, which is, um, it was Ryan, Hope, or uh, Haverhill, which is now known as Gigi. And I was like, Hope, 100% Hope. And I went in, and Olivia was like, Hope. And then, and then, did I, you know right away? I had a very good feeling. But that was a really fun example of then Caitlin came in yeah. to, I was like, where is she? And she's right in front of me. She came in to read with Diana, and it was really great to involve Caitlin in the casting because she helped me realize she was like, yes, this is it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> 
Hey, I'm Mason Gooding. I'm playing Nick in the movie Booksmart. Um, I auditioned for Molly, but clearly I didn't. Sorry, that's fine. Sorry. That's okay. You do a much better job than I could have. But um, after booking Nick, just because you had mentioned NYU, I was in NYU. Woo! And yeah, listen, man. Book smart. Um, yeah, I love that. And I dropped out. Because of this movie, I dropped out of NYU. Yeah. Yeah. I took up so much time, and I couldn't Book be smart, happy. pulling people away from their education. Uh, <laughs> Needless to say, uh, I couldn't, I didn't look back. I think this movie is phenomenal, and it was a bunch of fun to make, and everybody here is amazing, and I thank God every day. I love it. Victoria. Hello, I'm Victoria. I play Brian. Um, and I got the. I've never even done this before. I'm a skateboarder. I do this. Um, my friend Mikey Alfred, who's worked with Allison Jones before, I guess she had hit him up and was like, "Hey, do you know anyone who would fit this role?" I fit the role. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie Silverman. I'm one of the writers and producers. Um, my story is very similar to Austin's. Um, I, uh, and just, I heard about this project. It was going to be produced by Anna Perna and Gloria Sanchez and directed by Olivia Wilde. And that's basically the best email you ever get in your whole life. And uh, and just uh, will be lucky about this. It's the luckiest thing I've ever been a part of and the best. Full of motion, no comedy. <laughs> Big time ditto. Um, I came on as Haveril, which is why we changed the name because it's really so hard to pronounce. Um, but I really like the name. If anyone's named that, I'm sorry. Um, but I came in to read for Gigi and honestly was shook by my audition. I went in and honestly for lack of a better term, shit the bed, in my opinion, um, and was basically, like, I forgot the lines the first time, messed up the second time, and it basically became, like, a self-deprecating stand-up thing where I was like, it's going great, it's all fine, it's, it's okay, and I ended up getting so comfortable with Olivia in that room that I somehow got the scene right, maybe the seventh, the fourth time. told me about this. Nine Nine seconds of walking in the door. She was so hilarious in her forgetting which sides to pull out of her bag and the chaos that ensued. I knew she was my Gigi forever. I love Gigi. I'm not Gigi, Sorry. but I love her. I want to be her so bad. You just need to pop, anyway, pop up in the weirdest places. Okay. I don't have a mic. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, I, I'm Caitlin and I play Amy in the movie. Uh, I read this incredible script about four years ago and immediately fell in love with it. Uh, I waited forever. I, I put it first on the top of my list. I, I made sure that I, I, I was like a part of this movie. Um, and then two years later, Olivia came on and she had so many wonderful ideas and still wanted me to be a part of it. I thought she was like, no, we're gonna we're gonna go somewhere else. I always was like hoping that I wasn't gonna get fired. Um, and then she said in her first meeting, she said, uh, "No one else um, is playing Molly than Beanie Feldstein. Like we're not making this movie without her." And um, taken away. That smell a compliment off. Okay. Uh, um, I first read the script about three years ago, originally to play uh, a different role, and then. When Olivia came on, I got this call from my agent that was like, Hey, Bean, um, Olivia Wilde wants to have lunch with you. I was like, you called Beanie Feldstein. Are you sure you called the right person? They're like, yeah, 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 we're, we called the right person. I'm like, I don't think you did because that doesn't make sense in my brain. Um, and Liv was doing 1984 on Broadway at the time, and I was doing Hello, Dolly. And we had lunch or like coffee in Times Square, which is the only reason we do that, is we have to work on 44th Street, as we both did. But it felt very, like, New York, very cool. We were, like, before shows. Um, and Olivia, like, pitched Booksmart, and, and I, it was, like, a direct, there was no better director for a script that I had read a, a year and a half before. It was just, like, it, like, came off um, the page when she was talking about it and she pitched it like training day for high school um, and I was like I know exactly what you mean um, and we just had the most like insane lunch and then at the end she was like and I want you to play Molly and I was like 
what? Um, and it was just literally the best thing that ever happened in my life. On to Noah. Hi, I'm <laughs> Noah Galvin. I play George. Um, when I first came into audition, I auditioned for Alan, and uh, George wasn't in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but then it was uh, Sneha, and then yes. Sneha became George after yes, your audition. A girl named Sneha became a white boy named George. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but it was really special, and I think we got to like find George together throughout the process of this movie. They sort of saw how crazy I was when I first showed up, and they were like, mm, okay. <laughs> and then George blossomed from there. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jessica Elbaum. I'm one of the producers. Um, I was lucky enough to also get the script sent to me from Annapurna, and at the time only Caitlin was attached, and I knew I had to be a part of it, and we were looking to re-put it together, and Olivia and I had been friends for years, and I sent it to her, and then was lucky enough again that she responded, and then put together this dream cast and made the masterpiece that is Uh. Hi, what's up, y'all? I'm Eduardo Franco, and I play uh, Theo. Yeah. And uh, so I found it on Craigslist. <laughs> And they were like, yo, you don't got to get nude for this one. So I was like, let's, 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 let's see what happens, right? Now, uh, I had two auditions that day. I remember the first one was like, I'm not going to say where, just because like, I would love to go back. But security guards were like being hella mean to me that day. They were just like, we don't know who you are. You can't come in. And I was like, I got an audition right now, bro. And then I got another one. And they were just like, not having it and so they call reinforcements i was there for like 20 minutes rushed into that one that one you know well, i'm sitting here because i didn't get that one <laughs> so then i, I went to well i got a little bit of weight for, for you know for this one and i was gonna read i was reading for nick and uh i had this whole spiel that I was gonna put into it, and then I, I forgot all the lines, kind of like Billy. And Woo! I remember looking at him saying, "It's great, you're good, you're fine," and I was like, "Fuck no!" And then, but here we are now. Thank you. I'm Nico, and I share mics. Um, I just wanted to be in a movie with Beanie Feldstein, my best friend, and to work with Olivia Wilde and Katie Sosman and Jessica. I just wanted to do anything to be a part of it so I just came in and was so nervous and Olivia just made me feel so comfortable and Allison did and I'm just so lucky that I get to be a part of it and I play triple A. Hi but I'm Nico Haraga. I play Tanner. Yeah. I went in for the role of or I, I self taped for Jared and then I went in for Nick. Uh, Come for his role. <laughs> and, and then I, I got Tanner. I'm, I am also a skateboarder. I I dabble with acting here and there. Um, <laughs> but you got a sneaker skate, Skateboarding, yeah, do some stuff with some sneakers. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm mostly here as just an entertainer and to keep people happy. And I'm very grateful for this role and I have a second pick. Aww. Aww. I love this. So, as you can see, this is why I wanted everyone to sort of introduce themselves. Now you see, this is like the craziest, it's best the most group amazing of people. people. And I will say, you know, it's funny to think about the audition process because each of these actors created these roles. We may have had roles written that we had them in to read, but what happened is when they read them, they transformed them and we created this movie together. So this movie is made by this group. Everybody's DNA is a part of it. These characters don't exist with other actors. Whoa. And I'm very, very proud of them. I wanted to start with Jessica. Jessica, uh, what was it like in a Avengers, which we love, but like a super spacey, big budget blockbuster world to put and work on a movie like this that has a heart and a soul and is like just about people and relationships and no one has a special power? Although, I mean, yes, you do, but in a different way. I mean, for me, I just enjoy working on movies that I myself want to see and movies that feel real and true to the time and to sort of what's going on right now. So when I read the script, I knew that it would be a movie that I would want to see and, and a movie that hadn't been made yet for this generation and then being able to 
make it with Olivia, who I knew, would, and Katie, would bring so much to it, was just sort of undeniable. So I just approach things by what do I want to see and what do I want to be a part of. But you bring up a really important point that like these mid-level movies aren't made anymore, yes. and for a company to take it on, you know, we were really lucky that Annapurna let us go nuts with it and cast exactly who we wanted, um, which is something that I will be grateful for forever. But it was really inspiring to be a part of something that was not uh, um, the obvious choice for what to make in this marketplace. It was like we were making it because we wanted it to be made. But, you know, it wasn't like it's corporate studio people in a room looking at a graph being like, one of these needs to be made. You know, it certainly did not. We just willed it into being. It's amazing. Do you ever get nervous? You seem confident, and also you're one of those stars in Hollywood that I think everyone's like, you know what, if I could be friends with someone, it would be that Olivia Watch. She seems like a good time. But you you seem so confident and, and sure in your choices, but I'm assuming some of this was daunting. Well, absolutely. But, you know, I think there's a confidence that comes from doing something that you really feel good about, that you're really proud of. And this was something I gave my entire heart and soul to, and I think... Um, the headline take, that I take away from that is it's worth it. It's worth it to give your heart and soul to something. It's terrifying because you just leap into it with reckless abandon. But this was the most um, fulfilling, inspiring experience of my career. So at this point, actually, in the shoes of a director for the first time on a feature level, I feel more confident than ever. I think that happens when you find your correct sort of role. You're like, oh, okay, I feel good now. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> sit in that. I want to talk to the two ladies. How much of this was improv and how much of this was on the page? Um, I never sat this far apart. <laughs> no, this is really far. I just want to hold hands in the middle. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I mean, there was, it depends yeah. on the day, really. Yeah. Olivia like, was so loose with us. I will say the dancing was sort of like a spur of the moment sort of thing at the beginning of the movie, movie where. Uh, I pull up to Molly's house and we just start, I get out of the car, we just start dancing. That was really supposed to be just, Amy pulls up, Molly comes down the stairs and they drive away. They drive yeah. away. I mean, and then I just decided to get out of the car. Got dancing. right out of the car. Um, <laughs> Katie Silverman's incredible writing was, was already on It's so yeah. off the page. Like, you knew these girls, they, they, their banter and their wit and all the comedy comes from their intelligence and their love for each other, which we just were so obsessed with. So there were so many scenes that we wanted to stay directly to the page because her writing is that incredible. I'm literally going to start crying out there so much. <laughs> There were also other scenes where you want it to be loose and it's two friends in their bedroom gabbing versus like that witty banter that goes back and forth. So it really just, it just depended on the scene. And, and the fight scene, we stuck, we stuck very, very close to the script because there are certain moments that are so beautifully arced out through Katie's writing and through Olivia's vision for the project that there were certain scenes that were there and then there were certain scenes like the compliments and stuff yeah. where it was a bit... Yeah, and I will say that Olivia created a no sides or no script on set uh, rehearsal rule, which is really, really great because we all came in so prepared. And then once we were all prepared, we were there creating the this, this setup and how we wanted the scene to go. We were able to be loose and fun with it. Beanie and I were rehearsing um, together at our apartment. Non-stop. Non-stop. Because uh, we realized we talked the whole time. <laughs> Uh, we, we, which was nerve wracking for we us. We approached it like Molly and Amy too. It was like, very scary. This is a week. Okay, so check hundreds. off each scene. <laughs> we're gonna highlight them. We were like, really, it was embarrassing how big binders, and labels, and colors. I love those. Really. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what's a no script on script? What? Tell us about this. I stole that role um, from Art Scorsese. Who? A guy named. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked for him and I was uh, blown away by what happens when actors are not allowed to bring sides on set because it means that they are free to create and with a very short schedule like we have in 26 days to shoot the film yeah. I needed them to be ready when they got there to just play and what was amazing is that this cast is so brilliant that that was no big deal. I think there's like much more experienced actors who would have been terrified by that rule and they were like no problem watch me work so I'm very, very proud, but I think half of the, like, the, the brilliance you see in the movie, if you see it, is because of the energy they brought that day and their looseness and their willingness to give it their all. Tonight, on Entertainment Tonight, what director, first time director Olivia Wilde stole from Mark Stratasian? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying. Yeah, I love it. No, we're not using that. <laughs> I, could, I 
I didn't say search Casey, but it was anyway. Okay, so before we have our group compliment off, which is how I want to end this panel, I do want us all to share, because this is the beginning of press for you guys, and you are such a great group of human beings, I wanted to go around for one more round robin, in which each one of you will say one sentence, Austin, which is your... What? <laughs> 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 Um, okay, one sentence which is your teenage secret that no one knows about you. A secret from your teenage years that no one knows. You hoarded Polly Pockets. You ate exclusively toaster strudels for one year. Like, whatever your teenage secret is, okay? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, start us off. Uh, I have two missing teeth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Good. Missing teeth? Those are fake? These, these two, the insides. They didn't ever grow in? They never were there, thank you, God. Well, you look great right now. Yes. Thanks, Thanks you know. for getting my permanent sense up. <laughs> Teenage. Um, I know the lyric to every Taylor Swift song literally ever written, ever released on an album, or just to YouTube. I know it. <laughs> I used to gather lunch money my mom would give me to save up for video games. That's good. That's awesome. That's awesome. I was hungry, but my God, was it worth it? <laughs> you got this. You got this. Yeah, like my senior year, I ate Jack in the Box every morning. <laughs> <laughs> I failed my driving test four times. <laughs> oh, I you drove the American Champion Sweetheart Prize possession of Olivia Wilde with that driving record? It was okay in, in DC. It's there's a lot about like backing up and parallel parking, and I didn't realize there was a time limit. I get into it later. We just <laughs> First of all, driving tests are really hard, and that makes total sense. Yeah. And, I don't know, um, mine's kind of benign. I used to sneak out and go to Denny's. <laughs> Hell yeah! Thank you! Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Uh, delicious. I, love I had an obsession with Chris Angel. The <laughs> <laughs> I've seen every episode of his show. Sorry, Caitlin, you had? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Wow, this is this is going to such dark places. Um, I went and saw his show at the Luxor in Vegas when I was fourteen. <laughs> the only time I ever got detention was for eating a croissant out of my backpack in the library, and I was trying to sneak it like bit by bit, but they caught me, and I feel like that really sucks me up. <laughs> um, I went to high school in Midtown Manhattan. And uh, during acting class, me and my friends would ask to rehearse our scenes outside of class, and we would sprint to nearby bars that didn't card, and we'd do shots, and then run back to class and perform our scenes. Uh, that's never, never well. <laughs> I was addicted to prank calling. <laughs> Legitimate. It was a good thing. Oh, I got um, a detective came after me. But it was like a real problem. Anyway. Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't. I, Follow that. I don't have a sheet. I don't. Have, I don't know. I was very honest. I don't know. Um, a secret. Or can I just state something that I did when I was a teenager? Yeah, that's what I thought. We love that. Okay, something that I did as, okay, um, the, the, uh, the, the, okay, high school, the one time I got, well, one out of the two times I got suspended is that I yelled at my English teacher. Uh, <laughs> and in this movie, you love your English teacher. <laughs> She doesn't lose my homework, so that's why I love her. Yeah. That lady, not just her name. Um, I drove into a parked car 
um, completely sober on a summer's day because I had a crush on a gardener that worked on the house and I was trying to see if he was out there and I drove into a parked car and destroyed my car and that car like around the block from my house so all the neighbors came over and it was so sad. <laughs> what happened with the gardener? He wasn't <laughs> Um. Uh, Principal Lucinda. Oh, okay. She was looking for me during recess. I was in the library in like the cartoon section kissing Chloe. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. Okay, last but not least. Uh, I got a tattoo when I was 13 uh, on St. Mark's in Manhattan, and uh, they just he just asked for cash, and I just bent over, because yes, it's a tram stamp. <laughs> and I, I regret it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Olivia! Jeez! <laughs> That's a tragedy. Would you have put this group together knowing what you know now? <laughs> even more so. Yay! Even more qualified. I love that. Okay, so for our last thing, uh, the best part of this movie, which I'm stealing for my entire life moving forward, is the compliment off. Um, and so what I thought it would be really fun if Olivia, I, I thought you should be the ringleader since you're the director. I thought you should go around and compliment off with all your castmates. Okay, great. So Here you can go. just stand up, start wherever you want. Okay, I'll, I'll do the same order we've been doing. Awesome. Okay. How dare you? Make sure you have a microphone. Get him a microphone. You you're going to have to. Are being so awesome and sly and funny and a beautiful dancer. How dare you have all of these? How dare you be such a multi hyphen? You just come in here with this Paddington 2 real name. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you. I'll consider forgiving you. Diana, really? Really? You think it's okay? You think it's okay to be this nice when you're that beautiful? <laughs> That's not allowed. Stand down. Okay, but the same could be said about you because you literally have like the chiseled face of a Greek goddess. Um, and you're an insane actress. And you can direct a film. I mean, are you kidding? Are you, no, I'm mad. Are you actually I'm mad? It's like an apparition. I don't even. Very angry, both of you. Furious with both of you. Mason? What? Uh, okay, it's just sound the alarm bells. A new hunk is in the building. <laughs> of all hunks. You just stroll into the audition room with all this humility and then you turn out to be the hunkiest who learns a dance choreography sequence in like five minutes having never danced before. How dare you? You're now a contemporary dancer. So, hey, hey, I don't mean really to take that from you looking as good as you do, being as smart and talented as you. You know what? I appreciate you being a great role model for the kids, too. <laughs> Did you call me? About to listen to that. What you think? Uh, I dropped to it. I don't, okay, we'll deal with that later. Oh, Victoria, you're just gonna skate on in here. <laughs> I'm just a skateboarder. I've never done this before. And then you beat out about 400 girls for this role just by being you. How dare you? Alright, let me just say that. <laughs> Even before I mentioned I wanted to be roommates and like have two lovers and like just talk about things like straight up. Just talk, just associate. Like, I just want to be your friend. Like, and now you can't escape. And now we're friends. Like, what? <laughs> oh no. Who oh, gave you no. permission? <laughs> Who gave you permission to be the most genius, the most lovely, the most hilarious? the most warm, the most awesome, the most prolific, visionary Nora Ephron of today. Oh! I bow down. Who gave you permission to be like that? I need someone with good service to get their phone out and call 911 because uh, all that there's left to do is arrest her. You can't let her live in this country. She's the smartest, coolest, nicest, most inspiring. You can't be good at this many things. She had like 10 already. That's the limit. There are no more. I need someone to, to call Kamala. I need someone to call Ted Lou. Where are we? I have a shift. I just, I'm the government, police, FBI. We need to lock her up. It's the only way. <laughs> Billy Lord. I'm gonna need you to leave the building because we can't handle this much brilliance in one room. It's not fair, things will explode. 
I don't understand how you think you could just be a member of Earth's community without destroying the planet with your incredible energy. It's gonna blow up. It's gonna blow up. So what are you doing to the Earth? How dare you set the bar so high that someone's so short that can't reach it? And only five two, and the bar is like all the way at Saturn, and I can't climb that high. It's really, really stressful, but also at the same time so inspirational and beautiful. And I want to grow up to be you. And I'm gonna cry. Take her away. I take it away. Take her away. Get her out of here. Um. um what? Sorry. Sorry. Who are you? An angel on us? You. Is there an angel in the house? Uh, I don't know. Unless he's breaking heaven. I'm blinded by oh the Oh my light. god. This angel. I'll get you. I think I need to combine you two yeah, because the it. only thing that's more insane than it. one of you is both of you together. Here we so go. Part of me, you're just gonna wear a ring right there, like it's normal. <laughs> just gonna be a little ring right there. It's a normal thing to pull off, Dana. Or me? Did you have blue eyeliner right here today? You were me. Wear blue eyeliner, yellow eyeliner. What is this? Setting a bar? I can't look right at it. Sun. And ah. I can't look right at it. Blinds <laughs> from your beauty. Ah. 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 Just, Ow. just that much love and inspiration every day. Every, every single day. day. Okay. You have to be every day. Listen, what have you done? You've made me fall in love so deeply. I'll never recover. Just gonna think about that as I fall asleep. <laughs> right here. You ruined my life. You're all I think about. I love you so much. Oh, Together you. till the end. You're stuck with me. No one. <laughs> you. <laughs> you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You Ooh, sexy oh. Irish poet looking at us. This gorgeous foliage and this beautiful, beautiful subtle wig. <laughs> I can't, I don't know how we allowed you to be here because he's on Broadway right now. I certainly didn't. And you just casually mentioned you'd get wasted during class and still ended up the best fucking actor of all time. You can do everything we try to do while drunk. Thanks a lot. We rewrote the movie for Noah because he's so brilliant we had to add him into every scene. So how dare you? You made the movie more expensive. Jessica Album. Oh, how dare you dare me to do this movie? How dare you make me so right? <laughs> Just casually driving down Sunset, leans over, says, You should read Booksmart. And I was like, What is that? She's like, You'll see. And then it changed my life forever and ever. I love you. I'm so appreciative of that dare. I want to pass it on. Dare someone around you to be better and go for their dreams. That's what Jessica did for me. What? What? Say it! I'll, I'll say it! Say it in my fucking face! I'll say it! Your hair is the most luxurious part of the sexy beauty I've ever seen in my life. Uh huh. Wrap the whole world in it because it would solve all our problems. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you want to come at me with? Yeah, and you're like, okay. oh, I guess I wash it. I couldn't in a million years achieve that luster. Well, how fucking. How. Well, you know, uh. You, well, why don't. Why don't you, uh, it's your game boy, I'm down with open carry, baby. <laughs> well, how, <laughs> how dare you, okay, you're gonna have to call ICE or Sheriff Joe on pilot to deport my natural Mexican ass, cause how dare you allow a Mexican boy to see his dreams come true. <laughs> I had to because you left me no choice. How dare you leave me no choice? There Thank was no you. stopping you, and there is none. Your dreams will continue to become bigger and bigger, and they will all come true because you are you. Thank you more. Thank you more. <laughs> Thank you first. Thank you first before you said it. Thanks. Molly? Gordon. Oh, but you're just all... gonna be you? You're, you're just gonna be go from being my co-star and love the Coopers? Hey! What? To being the most brilliant AAA who walked in and landed that audition so hardcore that we were like, oh, that's what this movie's about? Thank you, thank you for showing us that this is a movie about women accepting other women and stopping to perpetuate the cycle of abuse that is only spun by the patriarchy. And you were the one who were who was taking it down in this movie. You're incredible. I love you. And how dare you not tell me you could sing like that until I saw you on stage in Alice by Heart and you broke my heart. How dare you be this? I love you.
Okay, you're for saying any of that. How dare you be an incredible mother to your gorgeous children? How dare you shoot a movie in 26 days that's better than any movie ever? How fucking dare you? How fucking dare you show up in a pantsuit? Oh, I'll consider forgiving you for how much I love you. Nico? Hiraga. <laughs> You strolled into our lives and you redefined Spicoli and you turned him into Tanner. And the only thing that is better than you in this movie is you every day on set making our lives better, making it a more fun project. We worked four weeks of nights on this movie, everybody. And Nico kept everybody smiling. How dare you be the most cheerful, hilarious, warm, loving person who, by the way, loves his parents so much. And I love them, and I love all of them. Oh, I said Olivia. Yeah. But you think you can just be you. Olivia! What? How dare you, at one point, and all of our motherfucking lives, including my man in the back with the blue button down right here, this handsome devil, including my man in the front here, including my man with the Star Wars shirt, how dare you, including all the beautiful women here, at some point in our lives, be our biggest crush. How dare you? How dare you? You left me no choice. <laughs> It's all your fault. Everything that's great and wonderful in the world is all your fault. She is so <laughs> great. I just wanted to um, say you're welcome to the internet today for that greatness because someone is better be zooming that over Wi-Fi to their editors and getting it edited up and put up right away because that was brilliant. Um, congratulations, Olivia. Congratulations so to the cast. The movie's going to be massive. It is now our jobs to tell everyone about how great it is. So go no, shout, you. tweet, Insta, post, review, tomatoes, all the things. We're up against this little indie called Aladdin, so if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, um, congratulations, and bye. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.